The saving of the American bison is really America's first conservation success story, and it certainly is a very significant part of our history at the Bronx Zoo. The zoo's first director, William Hornaday, prior to starting the Bronx Zoo, Hornaday actually did a survey of bison out west and determined that there were about a thousand animals remaining from a group that once numbered between 30 and 50 million. Hornaday was one of the founders of a group called the American Bison Society that actually met on a regular basis in the zoo's old lion house. And this group's stated goal was to save the American bison from extinction. So the American Bison Society formed in 1905, and in 1907, the Bronx Zoo sent 15 bison to the Wichita Mountain Wildlife Reserve in Oklahoma. There are about 500,000 bison alive today, but only about 1% of them, roughly 50 to 60,000, are genetically pure bison. And the reason for that is that when bison numbers were really low in the early 1900s, ranchers tried breeding bison with domestic cattle in an effort to create a hardier, bigger beef cow. And as a result of those breedings, most of the bison today have small amounts of domestic cattle genes in them. About 12 years ago, we made a decision to try and establish a herd of genetically pure bison so that animals could be available for both restoration programs and to supply to other zoos that were interested in working with bison that were of genetic importance. At the onset of the program, we weren't able to acquire bison of conservation value, and so we relied on embryo transfer to try and build up a herd. And we did that by taking embryos from pure bison and planting them in surrogate female bison here at the zoo in hopes that they would give birth to pure bison calves. And while we were successful in producing the first bison as a result of embryo transfer, honestly, that really wasn't the way to build up a large herd. So it wasn't until late 2016 when we were gifted a group of bison by the Sioux and Assiniboine tribes out of Fort Peck, Montana, that our bison herd really took off. By coming here with my tribe, I get to express our thanks for those people with incredible foresight who 120 years ago decided we're going to save the buffalo. We got to save the buffalo, and we thank them for that. The fact that uh, this herd was gifted to us and uh, the people who came here represented uh, the tribes were so happy and pleased that the bison be here means a lot and they knew that they would be cared for well and we made that promise that we would take care of them well. It's all worthwhile that, that everybody realizes that how important that animal is, how significant it is for not only for, for you know us as native people but for this country. You know, it's a big it's a big part of our history, all of our history. Instead of relying on embryo transfer, we could just let the bison breed naturally. Our goal now is the ecological recovery of bison across their native lands. We're getting ready to send three male and three female bison to the Osage Nation in Oklahoma to augment their herd. We are really happy to partner with the Osage Nation because of our shared vision and commitment to seeing bison of conservation value back in the wild. It almost mirrors what we did 115 years ago, sending animals from the Bronx Zoo to Oklahoma to be part of restoration programs. The day-to-day -day of working with the bison at the Bronx Zoo is first of all check make sure that everybody's healthy in the morning everybody's okay if there are any new babies and um, say good morning to the animals 60 come here come here want some grass yes he's a good girl he's a good girl yes he's good yes 
Over my career, I've worked with almost every species of mammals that we have, from the smallest of the mice to the largest of the elephants. The bison, they recognize you, they're happy to see you. They're a sweet species to work with. Hello, 41. I've been at the Bronx Zoo for 32 and a half years. This is the first time that an animal that I've taken care of will eventually be released into the wild. The zoo has done it before, but it's the first time for me that one of my animals will go, and that's rewarding. All the keepers that are involved in the bison program are very excited to know that this is the first time in over 100 years that bison are going to be released again and are excited to know that they've been a part of it. Look how great they look. So when we say we're moving six bison from the Bronx Zoo to Oklahoma, to the Osage Nation Ranch, it doesn't sound very complicated. However, the enormity of it should not be underestimated. It is quite a significant event one that carries a huge responsibility and is significant for our history with bison and is significant for what it will do for the future of bison. We have to think about um, a variety of things like which animals to choose. There's all sorts of things that go into that. The animals that make the most sense genetically and demographically to bolster some breeding for the Osage Nation population. So we're sending relatively young animals that uh, will have a full life of breeding. We want to start with a uh, smaller herd of three males, three females to first get this initial transfer um, to take place and make sure that everything goes well. Sarah, Brian, Michelle, and keepers will start getting the, key, uh, the animals out on exhibit, minus the two males, and to go really slowly. We have two full bulls, so two males that are full size, eight feet long, six feet high, three feet wide, so they have to be in a secure compartment of the trailer. They'll be separated from the other four to make sure that they travel um, well and that no one gets injured on the way, and then the four smaller animals will go in a separate compartment. All shipments are critical that we take into consideration the care and safety and well-being of the animals. And in this case, it's the same thing applies. We're going to get the animals out first yeah. that aren't going, and then they'll pull this back. They have to wait for us to call them. All right, we're ready. All right, cool. Good morning. Let's go, bull. You know, we talk about conserving species all the time. It is a tagline, but we really do it. And when you get to see it in a short amount of time with your efforts, it's truly amazing. And certainly for everyone here working on it, incredibly significant that we are contributing very directly to this conservation story. <laughs> First time going to New York and, and seeing the zoo, it was phenomenal. You know, it's one of a kind place. Everyone knows the Bronx Zoo, so uh, it was definitely a trip of a lifetime for sure. Just being part of this project in whole has been fantastic.
Our shippers, they said that the, uh, the route out was pretty quick, uneventful. Uh, once they got going, it was smooth sailing for them. They actually made better time than they thought. Once the bison get transported uh, across the country to Osage Nation, they will be uh, dropped off in a holding pen, sort of a quarantine pen for a few days and weeks to let them acclimate to the area. By the time they got here, I was in constant contact with them and, I, and Chief and our staff were out here and stuff and we were ready for them to show up and kick through the gate open. They were very, uh, we figured they'd be ready to get off the, the uh, trailer, but they were not. It took a little convincing and for a while they stayed on the trailer. <laughs> What we're doing right now is we have 3,000 acres set aside as a uh, bison preserve, and then we're going to expand that to 5,000 acres here in the next coming years. So um, it, we're, you know, we're going by leaps and bounds. At one time, our people had uh, great reliance on the bison for food. The Osage lived in what's now the state of Missouri and Kansas, and Oh, since about 1808, 1825, we uh, moved west until we landed here. Uh, but by then, the bison were gone. And we still have a bison clan, uh, but our ceremonies that we had at that time were lost. I mean, when you lose nine out of 10 of your people in one lifetime, you're gonna lose a lot of your culture and a lot of that's been handed down for tens of thousands of years. Bison was a key to uh, our social order and, and our uh, hopes for the future. So seeing them back is uh, it's, it's a symbol. We're on the right track. Sending Bronx Zoo Bison to the Osage Nation has really been a win-win. I mean, the Osage Nation again has a species of great significant and cultural importance to them, grazing on their ancestral lands. You know, for the Bronx Zoo, our animals are not merely ambassadors for their wild cousins, but, but these are animals that are actually taking part in an important conservation program. And the prairie wins because the prairie vegetation has evolved to have bison grazing on it and does best with bison grazing on it. And so as that vegetation community improves because of bison grazing, bison will help shape not only what plants are in the ecosystem, but the numbers and distribution of birds, small mammals, reptiles, and amphibians. So having bison here just creates a healthier ecosystem. So everything's done kind of in steps just to kind of make sure that the bison don't have a problem acclimating to where they're at and the, and the environment that they're in. So smaller area, get used to the new environment and the trucks and everything feeding them and then they get moved to a little bit larger enclosure and they got a little bit more room to run and they can, you know, get used to that. And then uh, step three would be the final, their final destination, home, 3,000 acres. Bison restoration is more than just restoration of the animal, it's restoration of our people, of our culture, and of our land as well out here. It's extremely gratifying to work on a project long term, you know, in excess of 10 years, and then finally begin to see the beginning of the end phase of, of the, the, the program where you know the goal is to have 
zooborn bison back out into the wild and to come here and, and see that happen is, is pretty amazing.